My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm sure you've all heard, but there's a movie coming out. The trailer just came out for Star Wars. And I think of, when I was thinking of the homily for today, I was thinking of that very first Star Wars movie. Some of you were probably alive when it came out and went to see it. Uh, Some of you have probably seen it in reruns a million times. But the title of that first Star Wars movie was called A New Hope. And I think that's kind of what today's readings are about. You know, the book of Revelation is a lot like the Star Wars environment. In Star Wars, there was this evil empire, and they ruled the Star Wars universe. And how did they do it? They did it through conquest and intimidation and brutality. And they oppressed people. And at the time the book of Revelation was written, the Roman Empire was the dominant force in the world. And how did they enter and gain power? They conquered lands, and they brutalized people and intimidated people into following them and to doing their will. So it's kind of like the empire in Star Wars. And the book of Revelation is written by a group of, by a man who was writing to a group of people who were a small band of people trying to follow Jesus of Nazareth, this guy they claimed had risen from the dead and rose and ascended into heaven. And so he's trying to give them that encouragement. Just like the rebels in the Star Wars saga, there's this small band of people fighting for freedom and independence, that everyone should be treated equally and kindly, and they're this small band facing annihilation. And that's the same thing that was happening to the early Christians in the church. In fact, every leader, every bishop in all of the communities in the early first 200 years of the church, all of them were martyred. All of them that stood up and proclaimed that they believed in Jesus, they suffered martyrdom. All the first bishops of Rome, the bishop of Antioch, the bishop of Corinth, the bishop of Jerusalem, James actually was the first uh, leader of the apostles who was martyred by Herod. And so this early church, these band of people coming together, they were suffering and facing this annihilation. So this guy, John, is exiled to an island, and he writes a book called The Book of Revelations. And a lot of people misinterpret this book. They think it's a story about what's going to happen. Well, in fact, the the church teaches that most of the events in the Book of Revelation were already happening to the people in that time. And it's not a prophecy, but it talks about what's going to happen when the church is victorious. And what he meant by victory was martyrdom and death and being risen with Jesus. It wasn't about events that are going to happen in this world. All those events were happening. When he talks about Babylon and the evil of Babylon, he's really talking about the Roman Empire and how the Roman Empire is seeking to destroy Christianity. And so he's writing this book, And why is he writing it? 
to give people hope. And in our passage today in the book of Revelation, it's all about hope. It's a story about what it's going to be like when all the saints in heaven, all the martyrs that are dying, are together with God, and they're celebrating with God, and they're singing that holy, holy. And in fact, today, at the Eucharist, there's going to be a moment where we're going to stand up and we're going to sing together that same holy, holy. And the church teaches that our voices are joined with the angels and saints in heaven, that time ceases and we all join together in a chorus of praise to God. And that's what's happening in that first reading in the book of Revelation. He wants to give these people who are being persecuted, being put to death, fed to the lions, mistreated, losing all their property and everything they own and have, he wants to give them that hope. And so he writes these stories and tells them what it's going to be like when we're all together with God. That right now, we're going through all these horrible things and persecutions, but ultimately, we know that God is victorious. Then we come to the gospel, the Beatitudes. We could talk about that for a long time, but again, what is Jesus trying to do? I think he's trying to give his followers hope. He's saying in each of those Beatitudes, it's kind of like a reversal. He's saying, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who are meek. They shall inherit the earth. And all these blessings he's talking about, these reversals, he's saying, in this life, we are going to mourn. We are going to suffer. We are going to be persecuted and have difficulties. But all of those things can't compare to what God has planned for us and what God is going to give us in the new life with him. It's kind of like when you're going through difficult times. We all have difficulties. You know, the church today isn't being persecuted the way it was in the early Christians. For the most part, there aren't too many martyrs. Now, there are martyrs in the Middle East right now that are dying and being persecuted. But in the United States, there's not a lot of martyrdom going on for Christianity, and yet we're still being considered less. And you see that in civil discussion, that Christianity is on the downswing in terms of how the popular culture sees it and looks at it, and looks at your faith and says, why? And so there's this age of skepticism, that faith, when my grandparents were growing up, was just a given, and now it's a struggle. If you want to have faith in God, you actually have to work at it in this day and age. Because for the most part, the world wants you to not believe. It wants you to lose hope and lose faith. And so, just like those early Christians in the time of Rome, we face the struggle of living our faith in a world that wants us to reject it. They want to fill up our Sundays with various activities. They want to fill up our time with various activities and take away from us that time that we need to be with God. And they do it in subtle ways all the time. The culture is constantly trying to take out all symbols of Christianity. And it's in the name of freedom, and I guess that's fine. But ultimately, what it means is, for us to have faith, we have to work at it. We have to take the time to pray. We have to take the time to recognize God in our lives. And we have to work to being Christians. And so it's not as easy. We too are facing struggles. And then in our individual lives, we all face hardships. The loss of loved ones, illness, whether it's cancer or other illnesses, sicknesses, separation. Those are all trials and tribulations that God knows that we are going to go through in this life. And today's readings want to tell us that there is hope that we can have hope in God, trust in God, that one day all the struggles and difficulties of our lives will come together and make sense in the kingdom of God, that he will make all the things that are difficult in this world right, and we will be with him and join him in those choir of his angels and saints and sing his praise. And so each week we come here to be a part of that, to join in the Eucharist, which is ultimately a celebration of God and the saints. As I said in the introduction, 
You know, we have individual days for saints. We celebrate on, June, on October 15th. We celebrate Teresa of Avila. July 31st is St. Ignatius of Loyola. September 3rd, we celebrate St. Gregory the Great. But today, we celebrate all of those who have died in the faith of Jesus Christ, whether they were martyred or died of natural causes, in any way that they died, we celebrate them because they too are saints. It's not just the saints we recognize here on earth, but everyone who dies in the faith of Jesus Christ and is in heaven with him is a saint. That's what the church teaches. And so today we celebrate all those who have gone before us, our loved ones, those we knew who were made a difference in our lives. They are with God today and are saints. And so when we join in the celebration of the Eucharist, when we partake and when we sing that holy, holy, they are singing with us today at this very moment, and their voices will join ours as we sing the praises of God. And so, while death feels like it's a separation, in reality, Jesus teaches that death does not separate us from our loved ones, that they live on, and they continue to live on, not only in the kingdom of heaven, but in our lives, praying for us as we pray for them and joining together our praise and singing to join with God and with Jesus. And so, on this feast day of all saints, let us remember all of our loved ones, celebrate the lives that they led, and that they now are in the book of Revelations, like John said, singing the praises of God in that feast with the Lamb. With one voice, let us proclaim our creed using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now let us offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. For those persecuted for preaching the good news of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those working to bring liberty and reconciliation to this world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our catechumens preparing to be received into the church, that they walk on the path of discipleship with support, understanding, and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish community may receive consolation, strength, and religious fervor through the intercession of all our patron saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish seminarians, Paul Sigan, Rich Pantano, and Deacon Sam Gian Greco, our religious sister, Maria Christi Delaney, for Kate Hahn, who will become a consecrated virgin, and for Paul Walter, Bob Warner, and Jerry Hodson, who are in formation for a permanent deacon, may the awareness of our prayers and concern for them give strength and grace as they respond at God's call. We pray to the Lord. For all those who have gone before us marked with the cross, the sign of our faith. Frank Nicosia, Othelia Wechter, Roseanne Gigino, and especially for Valerie Garrison, Dora Nenny, Dr. Charles Bauer, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for our own prayers and concerns, which we offer now in prayerful silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these prayers, confident that you will ask, answer them, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. The ushers will now accept our offerings. At the appropriate time, our gifts of bread, wine, and treasure will be brought forward by Elias and Olivia Chamoon. <laughs> 